What's up guys, welcome back to part 9 and the second to last part of the how to make a VR game series. As always, if you would like to support our channel so we can bring you better and more content, please consider subscribing to the channel or supporting us on Patreon where you can get access to our full source codes. In the last episode, we covered how to use the XR socket interactor, attach game objects to it and adjust their position using the attach transform. In this video, we are going to show you how to press a button on our canvas with your fingertip. We are going to combine what we learned from our hand animation video and what we learned in the part 7 when we set up our canvas and combine these two. So let's jump right into Unity. If you remember from the hand animation video from part 3, we already made an index finger animation on our right hand. So if you want the same animation on your left hand, just make sure that you follow the video from part 3 and set up the animation for your left hand as well. Go to our hands, to animations, right hand and here we can see our index finger animation. If we go to right hand controller, we make sure that the index finger right animation is set here in the blend tree so we can actually use the animation on our right hand. Every time we press the trigger button, our virtual index finger is expanding. Now, if we expand our index finger, we want to be able to press a button by just touching it with the tip of our index finger. For that, we need two scripts, one that activates the fingertip and sits on our hand, and another one that registers the collision between our finger and the button and sits on the button itself. First, we're going to set up our finger. Let's go back to the prefab. Go to right hand, open it up and then we go to index ignore. On this fingertip we will have a rigid body and a sphere collider. The sphere collider is disabled by default because we want to only enable it when we press the trigger action. Before we write the logic to enable our sphere collider we make sure that we have the fingertip tag attached to our fingertip. Call it fingertip and then attach it to our fingertip. Now let's open our scripts folder and make a new script that is called hand pointer. We're going to attach the script to our index finger and then let's open it. So first of all, we know that we always need a sphere collider when we attach this script as well. In Unity, we can just add a require component attribute. So let's type it up here, require component. And then we want the type of sphere collider. So now every time we attach this script to some game object, it will add automatically a sphere collider as well. Then in our public class, we want to make a reference to the input action that triggers the collider and also to the collider itself. So let's add two serialized fields here. Next, we want to subscribe and unsubscribe from and to our input action events like before. Let's add again an on enable and on disable method. So we have one event when our action is performed and one when our action is cancelled, like always. We can just copy the same thing and then unsubscribe. And then we add two callback methods. Let's move this one up. So now literally all we have to do is enable the sphere collider when we perform the action and disable the sphere collider when we cancel the action. So you already know how this works. We're going to enable the sphere collider here.
and the same goes here and we set the sphere collider to false all right and that's everything let's go back to unity let's choose the trigger action here this one will be right hand activate and here we are going to attach the sphere collider let's save and then go back and let's look at the canvas we go ahead and open the canvas and we're going to remove the slider and the drop down let's focus on the button let's create another script that is called button trigger let's add it to our button and then remove the button component we're going to remove it since we will have our own button component here and we're going to inherit all the important things from the other script firstly we're going to inherit from the button component let's just write button here here we basically just want to know when the fingertip collides with the game object which in this case is the button and then we call the button click from there to register the collision, we are going to use the onTriggerEnter method from Unity. Other will be our fingertip with the fingertip tag. So what we want to check is if other has the tag fingertip, we want to execute the click on the button. Now, calling the button click is pretty simple. We could basically just make a serialized field of a button, call it button, and then just call the onClick method on here. And this would already click the button for us. However, if we do it like that, we will not see when the color is changing on the button. Let us show you how we can do that now. Let's delete that again. And then to achieve this little animation, we are going to call execute events so execute, and then we give it the target game object, which will be the game object itself, so the button. Then we are going to pass in event data, which will be a new pointer event. And the last parameter tells us which method to call we can type execute events dot submit handler lastly since we need a collider to detect our collision we are going to add the same attribute as before so we're going to type require component type off and this time we want the box collider on our button and that's it guys let's go back to unity and as you can see now, it automatically added the button because we inherited from the button component, including the functionality that we gave it. So you can see that there is no box collider at the moment. So let's remove it again, add the button trigger again, and now we will have a box collider. Let's adjust the box collider. We can see it's not fitting at the moment. Let's not forget to set the box collider as trigger and let's give our button a color so we can see if we really press it or not. The color when we pressed it should be red. Now we can see if we actually press it with our finger or not. So let's go and test it. Let's move to the button. We take our hand, we press the trigger button and then we move on to the button. And as we can see, we can now click our button by just tipping it with our fingertip. Perfect! And that's it guys! Today we looked at how to set up the button and our finger for easy UI interaction in VR. In the next and last video of this series we are going to show you how to properly export your game for your Oculus or MetaQuest and so prepare you for your journey as a VR game developer. I hope you are enjoying this series. 
If you do, please consider subscribing or leaving us a like. If you would like to have access to our source code, feel free to join our Patreon. If you have any questions, we are happy to answer you in Discord anytime. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.